Happy Wednesday. I am so excited to be here. I've got um, Vivian and Chelsea from the Season Marketer. So we will jump in with them in a few minutes. I'll, um, I'm just getting everything set up and we'll get them formally introduced. But today we're talking about working smarter, not harder, and how to really use your content to the fullest extent. And I know this is going to be super supportive for everyone because this is something so many business owners talk about and struggle with, feel overwhelmed and all that. So we will jump in, but we will make sure that we're going live first and we'll do some housekeeping. Just FYI for everyone out there catching it live on the replay. My five-year-old daughter has bilateral ear infection. So we've been up since 2 a.m. So if I look like a worn out dish rag, that is why um, <laughs> that's what we're dealing with. She's resting there. So hopefully all is good. But um, this is just the kind of stuff that happens when you are a mom business owner um, and why I chose to do this. And situations like this make me so grateful that I am not working for someone else right now because um, it just makes a world of difference. And I can't imagine having like a W-2 employee job right now and managing this. So that is what's going on in my world. Um, as a thank you for anyone who jumps on live or catches the replay, we'll give a special giveaway. I'm going to do my masterclass about writing sales promos. So um, if you say hello, comment, um, you'll be entered for that. And I'll message you. So many people just don't know how to write sales promos or you know, they know how to give value posts with like a call to action at the end, but this is a masterclass all about like the literal framework to write a sales promo, sell your services, sell your product. So that's what we'll be giving away today just as a thank you um, for anyone who joins live or on the replay. And we have a big announcement. I'm going to be changing the name of the Facebook group, like totally changing the name. So keep an eye out for that to come. Um, it's just kind of the pivot that I'm taking and going in with really focusing on supporting done for you service providers and kind of everyone who's in the boat where they offer a service, but their revenue kind of gets capped at a certain point. And so uh, we'll be moving more in that direction. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And I think that is it for housekeeping. It looks like we are live on Facebook. I wanna make sure that it's working. Um, we're here, might be a little frozen, but um, I'll just keep an eye on it because I think we're good. But let's jump in. So we have, Chelsea and Vivian here. And I did some stats in the promo about this because I think it's just so important to hear that paid isn't always the magic bullet. And I know just as a consumer, I there are some people I love to follow and I love their stuff. But if I see sponsored on Instagram, I'm just scrolling past it. Like my eyes don't even comprehend it. Um, and I know that our brains, there's like studies out there. Like if we feel like we're about to be sold to our brains kind of shut down and we stop listening. Cause we're like, when is it coming? And so I think, well, I know that this conversation is so important because it's really about using content marketing, um, to the fullest, like this can be sales promos and value, um, but really getting everything out there, you know, pretty organically and with your own voice. And, um, so just wanted to touch on why this is so important, but just I will let y'all introduce yourselves because I didn't properly do it. So take it away. Awesome. Well, I do want to say that um, it's an exciting time to be alive in the world of marketing, just because apparently all small business owners have signed up to be content marketers and all marketers have also signed up to be content marketers yes. now, uh -huh. which if you guys did not know, we did not go to, we went to marketing school, but yeah. they did not have a class on content marketing quite yeah. yet. Mm -hmm. So it's all evolving and it's all new, but, um, my name is Vivian Walton and this here is my sister, Chelsea Mojica. Hi everyone. And so we are two marketing sisters. We have a 15 year age gap, which I think brings a lot of perspective because yeah. even though Chelsea really is the old lady, so, uh, you know, <laughs> we have very different likes mm -hmm. and I think that works to our benefits because, um, it helps to keep us well-rounded when we're discussing marketing topics, but we are with the season marketer. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I started, um, back a long time ago and Chelsea joined the last mm -hmm. two years, two years. Yep. Yep. And so she's responsible for all of the content that we put out there and y'all, we pump out a lot of content and a lot of content. <laughs> yeah. And this stuff is free for small business owners. Um, it's a good resource. So we have a weekly email that we send out. We also do a weekly YouTube video. We also do what else? A weekly podcast. That's right. So mm -hmm. how could I forget the podcast? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Basically, we just have a lot of content out there for you guys to look at to help you with your marketing. It's our goal is to use all of the experience we've had to help you feel more comfortable and confident with your marketing and handling it on your own because who has time to hire someone else? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to that. And I'm sure you want to do it on your own. Yeah. And I do want to say that as far as uh, background wise, we both happen to, this is kind of funny. We both went to the University of South Carolina. We both um, studied and majored in marketing. And then where the difference is, is Chelsea actually got her start in small business Uh when she was still in college, helping small businesses. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, I got my start working at a chamber of commerce as a resource for small businesses. Yeah. And so I think that having that background helps mm-hmm. a lot. Yes, absolutely. That's really cool. I didn't know all that about y'all. Um, but yeah. just to give everyone context, like they're in Charleston, I'm in Charleston. So we've met through a local group. And there's Penny. Oh, oh. <laughs> <saying hi. laughs> today. But so that's how we've met. And I've been on y'all's podcast and it's the SOB podcast, correct? So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so let everyone know um, where to go. That's a fun one to listen to and to add to your listening uh, list. Mm-hmm. So, and this is such an important conversation. I know y'all brought up a great point is that like, we are all in marketing. Like mm-hmm. you hear it all the time. I hear it with bookkeeping. I hear it with marketing. Like I, I started my business because I'm good at this, or I'm good at this. You know, I didn't start my business to be the salesperson or the marketing person or the bookkeeper, you know, like we have to wear all the hats, but there are some things that we'll talk about today that I know y'all have so much guidance and wisdom on about making it easier. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we kind of talked about why marketing is important. And that's definitely like, it doesn't matter how good you are at something. If nobody knows that you're like the best at it, then like, it's not going to do shit. Like, and I Mm -hmm. talked to a business owner recently that was even going to go get like another certification or more training because she wasn't getting clients, like what she was doing. And it's like, you don't need more certifications or trainings or experience. Like you just need to be able to like sell your face off and connect the dots for people. Like you're just solving the wrong problem here. And so I know that that's something y'all probably see all the time or like people who are great at what they do or offer an amazing service or product. And like, if they're not telling people that, then they're going to buy for someone else who's probably inferior. Do y'all see that a lot? Yeah. And I think really the today we were talking earlier about the key takeaways to the discussion. And I think there really are three and it it, uh, leans into what you were just saying. So first and foremost, the one thing is we get content fatigued as creators. Okay. So as a small business owner, you know, your business inside and out, which also means that you get tired of talking about it sometimes, or you're like, man, I sound like a broken record. And we joke because we love music so much. And Chelsea loves her record. She's Mm -hmm. like, we love records around here. Like spin that record. It it's taking so many more touch points for people to actually get that message. So for you, you may feel like, gosh, I'm saying this again. Mm -hmm. It may be the first time that someone else is hearing it and they may need you to say it five more times before their ears perk up and, or they're ready to purchase. Right. So they, you may Mm -hmm. just be priming them for that. Absolutely. I mean, I know recently we had talked about it. The new number apparently for marketing is seven to eight touch points before someone feels comfortable with you and willing to sell or willing to make a purchase with you. So you need to just keep spreading the word, even if you feel like you keep saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And then just point. Can I like pause on that for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. like, Like, I just want to repeat back what you were saying, like be a broken record. Like it might be the Mm -hmm. first time someone has heard about you. It might, you know, they're going to take seven to eight, 10 touch points to want to take the next step with you. Like just to normalize that for business owners that like, you're not getting it wrong. You don't Mm -hmm. need to recreate the wheel every time. It's not like, well, what else am I going to say? How else am I going to talk about it? And it's like, literally your job is to keep talking about the same thing. And like, Mm -hmm. just let's normalize that. Um, and just to see it kind of as a privilege, like, I feel like I'm talking about the same thing all the time, but I'm like, how lucky am I that I love what I'm freaking talking about? And I get to talk Mm -hmm. about all the time. So it's kind of that reframe of like, oh, I'm saying this again, or, oh, do I need to make this different? Or, oh, how do I do this? And just like getting it to everyone out there that like, you're not getting it wrong. You're getting it very right. If you feel like you're always saying the same thing, um, it's the same message, you know, it doesn't have to be like verbatim the same, but 
just letting people know like you're getting it right and like what like how lucky are we that we get to you know sit here and do our marketing and talk about the things that we love so I think that was just such a great point to kind of like pause on and just like Mm -hmm. level set first here I would say too, I'd argue the way I like to look at things and I know I'm, I'm a little, sometimes my head's in the clouds, but I do think (laughs) she keeps me grounded. (laughs) Um, But I do think I kind of liken it to if you're a teacher, let's say you're a social studies teacher that does fourth grade, how many different ways are you teaching the same material, but you're, you're finding new and innovative ways to share that message. Right. And so it's kind of like a small business owners. That's what we do. And that's part of what we'll talk about today, how you can repurpose, reuse and recycle and how those are each different, but you're essentially doing that. You're taking your core messaging and you're just sharing it differently. Right. So then it maybe looks like a new spin on it, but it's Mm -hmm. the same content. Mm -hmm. I love that analogy. My kids are Montessori. So, um, they have, you know, different age groups in the same class. So it, it, it's like that too, where they're all talking about one thing, but the different grades are going to be approaching it differently. And it's the same analogy with content. It's like, okay, you're talking about the same thing. And these different pieces of content are going to hit the people who are newer and fresher and greener. And then you've got deeper pieces of content. Your podcast is longer. Like the people who are more ready are going to be listening at that. So it's like, it's, it's hitting those kind of different levels of where people are at. So that's like a great analogy that you have. Yeah, I think, well, Chelsea, do you want to cover, I know the second touch point we had was, or the takeaway. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> we haven't started. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was She's like, struggling are, with allergies. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I am very stuffed up. I have really bad allergies and this pollen is no joke. Let me tell you, <laughs> like, I have like, yeah. It, everywhere <laughs> it, it is it's covered my car I can yeah so I sound a little nasally I'm sorry about that but uh one of the touch points that we wanted to talk about and I know it's something that you've definitely discussed with your audience a bunch is content marketing is not free like all of this takes time it takes effort don't sell yourself short your time is very valuable so really our key takeaway this key takeaway is going to be We want you to be able to reformat your content and use it to the fullest extent because then you're getting more bang for your buck, right? Because your time is valuable and it's money. It's not free. Yeah. Team time, whether it's, you know, it's you creating it and the team's doing something like you're paying with your time. Maybe you're paying team Mm -hmm. literally. So yeah, that's a great point is that it's good content, especially now with the online space being so noisy and with AI, like you really got to nail your messaging and make it cut through all of that and make it personal. So that does Mm -hmm. take time and it's not free. It definitely is not. I do think too, the other part of that is sometimes uh, because there is so much information out there on the interwebs, (laughs) we all get very confused and we're like, gosh, we hear from so many different sources about the right way to do something, right? So, and I know you've seen this, Jordan, when we get on Instagram and we're scrolling and someone's like, do not post your content at this time. Do not post on Facebook or on Instagram at this time. Here's or a, or yeah. things like, oh, you need to post five times a day. Or if you're not using your stories at least 10 times a day, then you're not reaching your audience. Yeah. I think there are so many conflicting views or mm-hmm. opinions. That's what they yeah. are, y'all. They're opinions. Yeah. And so what we want to encourage you guys and walk away with today is just knowing that there is no right or wrong way to do marketing. There is your way, right? And I think, Jordan, that's the beauty of what you do, which is when you're talking about one-on-one coaching, you're customizing something that fits somebody's lifestyle, somebody's business, and just the bandwidth that they have. So like Chelsea said, if I'm listening to Gary Vaynerchuk and I love him, but he's telling me to post five times on TikTok, well, when am I doing that? If I have a full-time job, run a side business, and on top of it, have to create all this content myself, I don't have time for it. Yeah. And we are going to be discussing three categories, repurposing, repurposing, recycling, and reusing. Again, there is no right or wrong way to do something. So there is no category that's going to be better or the best. It's just whatever works best for your situation. That's such a great point to start off with because it's like, we we do, we hear the like, 
mm-hmm. these five things, these hacks must do. And it's like, what's a girl to do? Like make myself wrong. And so, <laughs> so I did that masterclass. I know the last time we talked, it was like that masterclass about, I made 239K with a small audience. And it's like, just to show people and normalize, like I talked to a business owner recently. They're like trying to grow their Instagram account. And it's like, nothing is wrong with growth, but like that doesn't mean customers. So just bringing it back to that, letting people see what works for them, tailor it to them. So I know you've got some great, can't wait to hear like, so we've gone through like, okay, here are the basics. Here are the takeaways. Like let's level set. What's kind of like, um, are we jumping into the, the takeaways now? Yeah. So now we're going to talk about the three main categories. So Chelsea and I, one thing we noticed is a lot of times when we talk about repurposing content, this is what people think it is. They're like, they lump uh, any type of resharing into repurposing. And they're like, you basically just take the same content. Let's say I have an Instagram reel. I download the video because I put so much time and effort into it. I download the video and then I share the same exact video onto TikTok. Well, there are a couple different things that are not perfect or great with that. For one, you're going to get that emblem on the video that shows Instagram, right? Which TikTok, these are all competing platforms. TikTok's not going to be, you know, too fond of. And so then on top of it too, um, TikTok is a different platform and has a different, what Chelsea loves to call vibe. Yes. Okay. That's what the 20 somethings are calling it. It's a vibe. Yeah. And so it may not be as effective on TikTok as it is on Instagram. So what we actually did is we've realized there are three different categories when you're quote, reusing or repurposing content. And so the three categories that we're going to walk through are repurpose, recycle, and reuse. Yeah. And we're going to tell you how these are different. And then we're going to give you a small analogy. And Chelsea's going to share how we do it, um, yeah. you know, while we're pumping out so much of this content, yeah. how we utilize these. Examples, some tools, some tips that we use, because again, I am the one who pumps out all of our content. And let me tell you, it is a lot. <laughs> She seems, a a little, lot. she seems a little salty about that. <laughs> Not necessarily salty, but <laughs> it definitely is a lot of work. And we can see like in the Facebook groups, you know, you can see where someone shares something from another platform and it's mm-hmm. not to say dead in the water, but it's like, it does not seem to get mm-hmm. like the love and attention that. Yeah. Like, well, I actual... think, yeah, I think Vivian, you have a really good example of that for our YouTube videos. Vivian creates a weekly YouTube video. She doesn't share the link on Facebook. She actually physically uploads the video onto Facebook because Facebook prefers that. They prefer to keep people on their platform. So if she just uploaded the link to the YouTube video, probably wouldn't get that much engagement. And Jordan, let me tell you, I've been doing that for years and it's, it's a lot of time, like, (laughs) you know, having to upload the same video. And, and I have thought at times, like you always have that thought, you're like, would it be better to just stream and actually share the YouTube link, but everything that we've read. And here's the thing is we hope that if you guys decide to follow us over at the season marketer, whether on Instagram, YouTube, or on our email list, we hope to do the research because we, we like reading and have to stay up to date with this stuff. And so um, that's where we figure we do the heavy lifting and then we just share that information. And everything I've read still states that these platforms don't like the, you know, yeah, the sharing like sense. that. You know, when you think about it, it is there to make someone money. Um, yeah. And so it's, it, they don't want the other platforms on it or competing. And so they want you there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That advertising money is real. It's a lot, y'all. <laughs> So um, the first one, let's go ahead and talk about repurposing. So repurposing, when we use that word, what we're talking about is when you take the content that you've created and then you change it or reformat it so that it best serves whatever platform you're using. And so um, with our example, we're going to use an example because... Chelsea and her boyfriend, they love right now. They're kind of into this cooking spell. He likes to cook a lot, Mm -hmm, but so we, we are going to use a pancake analogy. And so essentially what that is, is if we were making pancakes, let's say her boyfriend doesn't like eating pancakes, but he wants waffles. He prefers waffles. Mm -hmm. It's all the same ingredients. And she's just putting it in a waffle maker and making a waffle now. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, you have all the same ingredients in this content. You are just customizing it to what that person 
or that audience prefers. So if we were to do, let's say, um, well, Chelsea, you get into the example. Yeah, yeah, of course. And our examples are all things that we actually do. I actually do all of this. So it works for us. Hopefully it would work for you. A great example of repurposing specifically is going to be carousel posts on Instagram and on Facebook. We like to share carousels for meteor information. I then go and use that same information, that same content, but I create a video out of it. And specifically to share on TikTok, I will say I have noticed TikTok. I don't know, Jordan, if you've seen this. I don't know if you're on TikTok, but TikTok does. (laughs) Wait till your daughter gets older. You're going to be on TikTok. I'm going to be on. Yeah, it'll be for a different reason, though. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll say TikTok does not like B-roll. It wants people talking in the view. So I've learned that. I've discovered that with all the content I've created. So now when I create those carousel posts, I make sure that I basically take the information and I talk. Mm -hmm. I create a video of me talking and explaining that information. Repurposing is going to be great for like we have YouTube videos and podcast episodes. So that is another great way you can reformat long form videos and cut them down into reels or TikToks. Mm -hmm. A great tool for this that we personally use is Opus Clips. It is an AI software that all I have to do is upload the video and it goes in and creates, I want to say it creates like 20 clips at a time of this 30 minute video. I, (laughs) Opus, Opus Opus Clips. Yep. Mm -hmm. O-P-U-S. O-P-U-S. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's clips. It is so helpful because let me tell you, I used to watch our videos and manually clip all of that. No, that it takes too long. So for repurposing, if you create long form videos, you definitely probably want to use something like Opus Clips because it's a really great way to use all the information you've created. Another thing is if you don't create long form videos, blog posts, your FAQ page, you can take all of that information that you've already discussed and turn it into a video or turn it into a carousel post. So that's really what repurposing is. I see that like with people sometimes it's like and I think it's just a preference thing I don't know if Mm y'all have a preference but people are either like I'd rather create the long form blog Mm -hmm. first and then pull it into like three posts or I'd rather create the three posts and then mash it together for the longer Mm -hmm. forms I don't know if y'all have a present I feel like it depends for me so it's just one of those things where like you kind of find like your flow and you're like okay Mm -hmm. cool I know how I can this podcast I was on I can pull this into three different posts because of this one thing. So yeah, I don't know if it all kind of. Yeah. It's really a personal preference. I personally create our blog posts first and then reformat that content into smaller like carousels or bite-sized videos. Yeah. And I think really too, the, what's interesting about that is, um, when she was, I wanted to go back to the Opus clips, you know, we were, you mentioned AI earlier and I get it y'all because we, I went through the same thing where I'm like, it's kind of cheating. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, you know, it's um, like, is it going to make me lazy? This and that, how good, what's the quality of it? But I will say that with Opus clips, what I love about it is not only does it give her the clips, but it, it gives you a rating of how well yeah. it thinks the clip will do. And it tells you why which is amazing to me. So I'll tell you, it has an engaging uh, first, hook. yep, mm-hmm. engaging hook and it's got a call to action and it has this. And so they're giving you their reasoning for why they clipped it the way they did. Okay. And so, and that's really yeah. helpful because there are other tools out there that you can use. That's basically the same thing. I personally think Opus Clips is the best formatted one. I feel like the AI is the best at actually picking out clips that work and it explains its thought process. Mm -hmm. So personally, again, we use Opus clips and that's the best one that I've ever used. There are other ones out there. It's really your preference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, so the next one is going to be recycle. Mm -hmm. This is basically where you take the same content and then basically you're sharing the same video across all the platforms. You're not doing anything to it. Mm -hmm. So basically going back to our pancake 
analogy, if Chelsea had leftover pancakes and she wanted to share them with somebody, she would give the pancakes just as is, right? She's not modifying it. She's not doing anything and then sharing it with somebody else. And so ideally, if you're taking that video in cross uh, sharing it on platforms like TikTok to YouTube shorts, mm -hmm. YouTube shorts to Instagram. The only thing I will say is you want to be sure that you're uploading the native. If now Instagram and, and Facebook are owned by the same company. So that's a little different, but um, you are wanting to kind of upload those native videos. Absolutely. Make sure again, native video, other thought processes, other things to think about. Like I had already mentioned, B-roll is not popular on TikTok. So maybe you don't want to share another B-roll or you don't want to share a B-roll video that you posted to Instagram on TikTok. There are even just formatting, formatting things can sometimes be different. These are all things to think about when you are reusing. It's not wrong. You can absolutely do it. We do it all the time. Now, how I do it for Instagram and TikTok is I post them at different dates. I don't post the same video across platforms on the same day. So if I share something on a Monday on Instagram, I might not post it on TikTok until two weeks later, but I am still using that same video. So it is still reusing. If you want to post it on the same day across platforms, that's okay too. Just remember to be sure that it is the best way to share that information. And I, I love that you're bringing these because I think this is just something to get people's brains thinking about when they're creating content. It's like, okay, this is something that I can use in multiple places. And that just kind of takes away the overwhelm. And then mm -hmm. when you can be so strategic about it on the front end, it's like, and kind of my process is like, okay, I write a post and then depending on Instagram or Facebook, it's like maybe Instagram, I have a reel that goes with it and Instagram has a graphic. So it's like, yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same, but, and we, you know, stagger how we roll that out, but it just gets your brain thinking of like, okay, how else can I share this? Or maybe it's posts that I've created from a live stream that I did. I take these three points from my live stream and put it. So it's just like getting people to think through like on the front end of maybe even like creating a schedule of like, okay, I'm going to start here. And then it's going to go here and then it's going to go here because when they have a VA or someone, they're going to need to have that process basically mm -hmm. laid out for them. I mean, someone could help you with that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like your thought leadership and vision and all that. And maybe they can kind of fill in the details, but having that is like going to save you so much time. And yeah. like, I love that y'all are like, work smarter, not harder, because this is the, the stuff you think about and not just like, well, let me just post over here and let me just do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah. So these are I just personally, great, like, I personally, to do. yeah, I personally, for our content, I have um, a schedule for both Instagram and TikTok. I create a monthly schedule. Do I always follow it? No. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I just want to say if you decide if you decide to make a schedule and then you end up not sticking to it that's okay it as long as as you just said you're thinking about it at the beginning about how you can strategically use all your content to the fullest then that's what counts. Yeah. And we do recognize too. I think, you know, y'all we're small business owners too. Like mm -hmm. the season marketer is a business and Chelsea, like she said, there are times like she'll lay out the schedule and I'll get a text from her that says, Hey, you haven't approved X, Y, and Z, or Hey, you need to look at X, Y, and Z. And so even as uh, marketers and small business owners, we're still in that mm -hmm. flux of like, where as a small business owner, you may be waiting on somebody mm -hmm. to do something for you, or you're the one that hasn't given the approval or something. So schedules, timelines do change, mm -hmm. but I will say, and I don't know if you've done this recently, Jordan, but as you, as your business grows, you kind of, um, you think about things a little differently, right? So Chelsea and I just sat down and did strategic planning for the season marketer a couple of weeks ago. The one conversation that we had that was super useful was, what do we want each one of these platforms to kind of provide, right? Yeah. And what I mean is back in the day, you have a television and you would scroll through the different channels, right? 
look at these social media platforms as different channels. What are you sharing on TikTok? How do you want that vibe to be on TikTok? And how does it differ from what you're streaming on Facebook or in a Facebook group? Do you want the conversation to be more intimate in a Facebook group because it provides something a little different than what you're sharing on TikTok? And I think the way to think about that is, you know, what you catch on Lifetime is very different from what you're catching on sci-fi. And so people go to these for different reasons. And sometimes your audience is not going to cross pollinate. Sometimes the person that follows you on TikTok is not going to be the person that's in your Facebook group. But sometimes if the offering is still something they want to be a part of, sometimes it will, they'll be the same person in both of those platforms. So yeah, that's a good point is thinking about the intention behind yeah. all of that. Yeah. I think then the last one is the, um, <laughs> she's trying to be so quiet. Sorry. The last one is reuse. Now this one varies a little bit because this is the one that we think a lot of people don't like doing, or they're kind of like, is it cringe worthy? Or, you know, like, am I doing something I'm not supposed to? Do you want to explain cringe? Yeah. I don't think we have to explain cringe, but on we shot a podcast episode a few days ago and we were using a lot of slang and she just uh, explained cringe, which I feel like is a common one, but okay. I'm over 40. I have to explain things. <laughs> um, so reuse is basically where you've already shared something and you're resharing the same exact video. So if we go back to the pancake analogy, this would be like, I have leftover pancakes and then I just want to enjoy them the next day. Now, mm -hmm. if the next morning I want to enjoy them, I might throw some sliced strawberries on it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're taking a video that you've already shared on the same platform. And I think you've probably seen this where people are like, oh, it's our uh, one year anniversary of when we went viral. I'm resharing it. So they changed the intro just a little and then they clip the same exact video. Yep. So okay. that would be a uh, reusing. Yes, exactly. And honestly, if you don't want to add to it, you don't have to add to it either because like we were discussing, not everyone is going to see your message. You resharing the same thing probably is going to reach new eyeballs the next time. We, what I personally like to do is I go through our TikTok and I look at videos that have done really well. I specifically do this about our course mm -hmm. because we have a course um, that rock your fair for people who are new to events and craft fairs and stuff like that. And I think it's a wonderful course. <laughs> I would love for people to enjoy it. So any videos that did really well that are also about our course, I'll just reshare them because now it's probably going to meet new eyes. I'll change the caption. Uh, maybe I'll add a new hashtag. And like Vivian said, you can add some introduction, some new introduction mm -hmm. or a different ending. You can add to it or you could honestly just reshare it. Let's be honest, are people like going through your social media to see if you have shared the post before? No. And it's like, inven it's our inventory. It's our asset. Mm -hmm. Like if we're, mm -hmm. especially an online business, like this is my inventory and it gets to work for me again. And like, to your mm -hmm. point, it's like, I'll, I have the same stack of books next to my bed that I'll read through multiple times because I get something new every time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even in the off chance, that something you posted however long ago happens to see, or, you know, the same person yeah. happens to see it, like whatever the odds are of that, like mm -hmm. they'll probably get something new out of it or they'll probably be like, oh, yeah. dang, yeah, I really liked her. I forgot. Like mm -hmm. it, if they're following you that closely, then like that means they need to buy from you. So like it, it's yeah. a win for everyone. Like it saves you time. Mm -hmm. You get to repurpose, you know, especially like I take the month of July off with my kids. So yeah. like I will reuse the shit out of some stuff. Like mm -hmm. I'm not recreating that whole month before I leave. So it's like yeah. strategic repurposing and using that as your inventory and then just like full permission to like mm -hmm. put some new wrapping paper. Or not. Um, so I mm -hmm. think that's great to be like, like yeah. when we're on spring break in a couple of <laughs> weeks, I'm going to reuse one of my live streams and be like, right. popular replay. Like, here you <laughs> yeah. go. Look back and see which one has yeah. the most views. Here you go. Um, Absolutely. Because that's what it's for, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, I think also a lot of times we're the beauty of being a small business owner in this day and age is that we are also consumers. 
We are people mm-hmm. on these platforms. Now, Chelsea doesn't like doing, um, she's a little bit of an odd duck. She's not on Facebook quite a bit, but I prefer to be on Facebook, right? Because that's just what I like. And so I think what's interesting that's there- not odd for my age, but- okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's odd. <laughs> okay. Um, but the interesting thing is that when we're consumers, we're looking at things differently. So yeah. for example, I stopped to think to Chelsea's point, I stopped to think- how many times have I clicked on a profile and started following somebody and scrolled all the way down mm-hmm. on their reels? Right. Very yeah. few times, unless it's a comedian I like and they have me in stitches. I literally will maybe watch like the last four mm-hmm. or five, but I'm not scrolling to the bottom. Yeah. And if we're doing our job, which is we're posting consistently on these platforms, like you said, your library is so big at this point that somebody is not going to judge you for posting something again that you posted in 2022. Yeah. I also, I love you talking about how we don't scroll through other people's Instagram. Let's talk about real quick, just bring it back again to the seven, eight touch points. Because how many times do you see one video from someone from a a profile and you immediately follow them? You don't do that. Yeah, it takes a couple. Yeah, yeah. You are going to see their videos a couple of times. You're going to get their messaging a couple of times. And then you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to follow them. It's kind of like with just as a busy mom, it's like, I'll think of something that I need to do. And I'm like, oh, dang, I need to do that. And, And it's something I want to do. Like I need to send this email or I need to purchase this thing. And it's like, that takes me multiple times for something that I'm already on board and decided about. So like (laughs) with something that is like brand new information, it's like my Mm -hmm. brain can only take in so much. Like it, it takes me a little bit of time to warm up to someone new or to find something new and really like, okay, now this is someone I want to follow. Now I'm on board with this, picking up with their laying down. So it's like, It just like, we're so inundated and and just being willing to see that like nothing is wrong with that. And like, you're not getting it wrong as a business owner, but you're just, you're supporting the people in front of you who are also busy and they are also overwhelmed and they have a ton of stuff coming at them and seeing like me showing up to help you solve the problem you have is serving everyone. Yeah. I think the the last thing I I do want to drive home with that is I often tell tell Chelsea that the way I look at things is when, okay. So if, if you saw somebody, we feel really weird. It's, it's weird to sell to people, especially if let's say you're a jewelry maker and you're like, I, you know, I got into it because I like making jewelry. I did not get into it because I want to be selling stuff or pushing things. Right. But it's just a part of the business, right? You're a small business owner. You have to do it. Marketing is inherent to the success of your business. What it's like now is if you are expecting someone to buy from you from one Instagram reel or from one Facebook post, it'd be like me seeing someone across on the other side of the street. I'm walking on a sidewalk. I see them across the street and I run over to them and I'm like, Hey, my name is Vivian. I sell widgets. I expect our widgets are the best. You should buy my widgets. They don't know me. I haven't asked them if they're even interested in widgets. I haven't explained anything to them. And I'm assuming I'm then going to get my feelings hurt if they turn me down that's not how it works. Like you're, you're paying into the the little piggy bank. Every time you're creating content of people, eventually, like you said, warming up to you until they're ready. And like you said, they may have every intention of buying that widget from you now, but life got in the way. And I had to take my daughter to a pediatrician and I'm like, I'll just have to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's just like such a great point that we can kind of like wrap this conversation up with because I I've pivoted to support done for you service providers and part of that is because so often these people fill their spots really fast with their low ticket like being the hands in someone's business and then when they want to you know it's been from referrals or it's been from word of mouth or whatever and like they could fall off a log and book clients and then it's like well now I am overbooked I'm not making any money I want to raise my prices I want to create a higher ticket And I am so freaking uncomfortable selling. I don't know how to sell. Like I built this business on referrals and word of mouth, which is great. But now like I might actually have to sell. And I talked to a business owner recently that was like, you post in the Charleston Facebook group all the time. Like, that's great. Good for you. I feel like I would be too salesy. And I'm just like, anyone who feels like they're being too salesy is 
automatically not too salesy. Like if you're worried about it, you're just yeah. not like that. You can't if you aren't. And and also like what's being too salesy selling, letting people yeah. know what you have. So it's <laughs> this very like, like, I'm glad we're kind of wrapping up here with this. Cause that's such a great point you brought up. It's just like, it's just kind of our job. And it's not like, yeah. you know, just as a business owner to educate people, why do they need to work with us over someone else? Or, you know, to just be like, well, I'm good at what I do. Obviously you should figure it out and hire me. Like that just isn't how it works. I would argue too, that the one thing, the reason we went to marketing school, mm -hmm. the whole purpose of getting an education with a marketing background is because the sales, you don't have to worry about that part if you're doing your marketing well, because you're reaching people that are interested in needing what you want. If you're fixing a problem for them or you have a solution, they're already going to spend the money. You just want to be sure that your name, your business is on the table as a choice. And so that's where I would challenge. Yeah. I would challenge people. If, if you feel like sales just kind of like grosses you out and you're like, I don't want to be that person. Well, then your marketing needs to be good because mm -hmm. what's going to eliminate that is when you are reaching the right target audience. Chelsea and I, for example, with the course that we have, the Rock Your Fair course, we know we're not out there trying to sell that course to every small business owner because yeah. not every small business owner would want it. The person that would want it is the person that is a candle maker that is thinking, I think I may want to start going to the farmer's market, but am I ready? Yeah. How much, how intense would that be? What kind of expenses would I have? you know, those are the people that we would want to catch for that course. But we know that we know very well who it is for and who it's not. So us selling doesn't, we don't worry about that because it's a resource for the people that need it. You, if you haven't started selling at farmer's markets and you want to, I know for a fact that course is going to help you because you're not having to spend your evenings researching everything that we've already packaged up for you at a really great price. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. So it's just seeing that like we saw, saw the problem that someone has in like marketing, messaging, getting out there with content, you know, value content, sales promos, like it's all just like helping someone get what they want and get it faster. And so when we can like hook into that with marketing and getting out there, it just gets so much easier. Y'all want to wrap up with everything and kind of just like bring it home for us? Yes, absolutely. I think really, uh, let's just hit home the three things that we want you guys to, yeah, to walk away with. Um, content marketing is not free. You guys are spending yeah. time doing it. So be sure that you are recycling, reusing, and repurposing that content to get the most out of it. But to your point of those three categories, there is no right or wrong answer. It's whatever works best for you and the situation that you're in. So, and do not be afraid. We get content fatigued because we're the ones writing and crafting all this stuff. Your audience does not. So go yeah. out there and be that broken record player yeah. and continue to, you know, hit home that main message. Yeah. Where can people find you? What's <laughs> like a, you know, I know we've kind of talked mm -hmm. about different platforms and all that, but kind of break it down yeah. for us, um, especially with the intentions behind the platform and what people will get. Absolutely. The Season Marketer, really, our entire goal is to be a resource hub for small business owners. We want to do all the heavy lifting for you so that you don't have to spend all this time researching something that we already know and we know it and we're here to share it with you. We are on YouTube under the Season Marketer and the SOB Marketing Podcast. You can listen to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We're on all the platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We are not on, what is it, X? Yeah, <laughs> formerly known Twitter. as Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we are not on X. Um, but really, if you just go to our website, uh, www.theseasonmarketer.com, we have everything on there so that you can easily find all of our resources. We have free templates, free downloads, we have other resources, blog posts. I write a blog post to a week. What else do we? Yeah, I think I, I do just want to put a little asterisk there. When we say the SOB marketing pos podcast, we're not calling you guys SOB. It's yeah. small owned business, <laughs> small owned business mm -hmm. podcast. I like that. You girls. Yeah. yeah. Love it. That's what I was like. Oh, I can't wait to be an SOB on here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Chelsea. I really appreciate y'all coming here today and sharing 
so much. I know people got just so much value and I can't wait for any questions. And I didn't even look this whole time. I was too engaged. Um, <laughs> I'll just do a quick run and see. It was okay. the last time I looked. Um, but if anyone does have questions now or on the replay, we will still be checking um, and we'll make sure that we answer those. And then Chelsea and Vivian will put their links below for anyone, um, you know, get your questions answered, use their resources, because we're just so grateful to have y'all here. And thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. It was thank great. You. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>